I guess instead of using a static last pause variable for in the for the menu, we could actually create that as part of the input system. That'd be helpful. Because what if uh, another system somewhere else needs to use the same kind of variable technique? But great. So we can we can highlight these things, and if I go off of it and click, nothing happens. Now if I go back onto it and click, all right, it worked that time. Yay! Okay, let's go. Let's go back to the original. The original challenging situation was this: we left the mouse cursor hovering over the input button. And then we can switch to using the keyboard. We go backwards with the keyboard, back a menu, and then we're gonna go forwards with the keyboard, forward a menu, and good, we can still move things around. Yeah. And then we can switch to the mouse if we want to. Yeah. All right, cool. Yay, that, that totally worked. I loved it. Oh, that just wraps the choices. Well, heck, that was easier than I thought it would be. Let's make sure this works. Uh, yay! <laughs> As if anyone could be sure about anything. Man, sometimes I think I'm so sure about things, but I'm never really, really am sure. Okay, here we are. Click in the mouse. Yes! This is a good sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got the binding, successful. What's the B? I mean, v, VB. Button move active, done. Okay, great. Yes, 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 yes. We have some good code here, started. Let's run it without debugging. Let's just run it without debugging for a second and see if it does work at this point. Oh, crash. <laughs> Instant crash. Oh, because of the unit? That's no, that's no problem. Look at that. When I'm clicking the mouse, we're getting some air whooshes, finally. Oh, this is almost correct. Yes. Oh, man. That was a long code tunnel. So, but it worked. Check it out. We're clicking the mouse. And look, it's putting a three in three dimensions. It's taking a two-dimensional position and converting it to 3D. And putting that in our world right where we want it. Yes! Oh, this is sweet! So sweet! Yay! So, um, just to wrap things up, what I've been working on for this stream today are lots of features with the mouse. So, uh, you can now use the mouse in the menus. And, um... Thank you, Danny McGee! Appreciate it! So you can use the mouse now in the menus, right? So if I want to want to select this and you know change my settings, I can use the mouse completely. And um, um, now we've got the beginnings of be being able to actually move the character with the mouse. Sorry about the weird flickering background. That's an issue I know of. Uh, it has to do with this high resolution mouse pointer with a uh, low resolution background. So I'll I'll deal with that. It doesn't happen on Windows, thankfully, but it happens on Mac. So. The next step in, in the evolution of this mouse code is basically we, we've got this ability now where we can click the mouse and it converts a two-dimensional position to a 3D position. So we, we know exactly the 3D position that we want to move the character to. The next step is going to be moving the character to that position. That's going to involve using the pathfinding system to, uh, to do that and to manage the player's movement with the pathfinding system, which has to be a lot of overhaul of code actually because that's all buried in the AI system, and this is a human player which doesn't have an AI component. So there's a lot of work left to do to get the character to move with the mouse. 